Good afternoon, Tech Nation. Thank you all for participating in today's webinar. We are thrilled with the great turnout today with over 190 attendees pre-registered. A few notes before we begin. Earlier today, registrants were emailed a webinar Wednesday workbook. If you did not receive a copy, you can download it from the handout section in your webinar dashboard. All lines will be muted, but you can submit questions by using the questions or chat feature on your dashboard. Certificates of attendance are sent to attendees that complete the post-webinar survey at the conclusion of today's webinar. The survey will appear on your computer screen immediately following the conclusion of the webinar. Certificates will be emailed on or before November 11th. If you do not receive a copy of the survey, please email us at webinar at mdpublishing.com. TechNation would like to thank our sponsor, All Parts Medical. All Parts Medical is dedicated to servicing the needs of imaging service teams. All Parts provides OEM replacement, Dunley, and Phillips Parts from its 80,000 square foot facility in Nashville, Tennessee. In addition to parts, All Parts provides training, technical support, equipment disposition, equipment sales, and software, supporting multiple manufacturers and multiple modalities. All Parts helps imaging teams do more of the work themselves. For more information on All Parts Medical, visit allpartsmedical.com. Our presenter today is Kevin Gill, Director of National Sales at All Parts Medical. Prior to joining All Parts, Gill was Director of Strategic Accounts and Business Alliances for Four Rivers and was Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing at PartSource. Gill has held senior leadership positions in several industries and has a deep understanding of software and technology leverage to help customers address both hard and soft costs. Gil is also an adjunct professor at DeVry University. Kevin, you may begin whenever you're ready. Thank you, Kristen. Thanks to uh, the whole Tech Nation team, not only for creating this platform, but for making it easy to hold these types of events. And thank you to everybody that took time out of their day to join us today. Uh, what we're going to talk about today, you see the title, Digital Tools to enhance supply chain management. We're actually going to talk beyond just supply chain management and talk about the whole digital tool ecosystem and quite frankly we're going to talk about it in the tone of frustration because it is my thesis in this presentation that these tools have really yet to deliver on their promise of truly making you the technician, you the engineer, you the director far more um, efficient, far more effective. Before I get into my actual pitch, I'm just going to do, do a very small commercial on us, just so you know who the heck you're talking to. Um, and Kristen did a good job of, of hitting a lot of these points, but we've been around since 2006. All Parts was acquired, uh, acquired excuse me, by Philips in 11. We do OEM replacement, we do Philips, and we do Dunley out of our 80,000 square foot facility. So we're really a one-stop shop for virtually all of your imaging needs. We, we also do uh, technical support and uh, we also do training and equipment dis disposition. We're ISO 13485 certified and we've got a, a stellar customer satisfaction rate. But we're really not here to talk about us. We're really here to talk about you and what I consider to be an opportunity that has yet to be uh, optimized. So if we think about the healthcare technology management software ecosystem, the tools that you are asked to use during your business day to be very effective and very efficient. Let's take a look at some of the tools. If you're involved in capital planning, you've got tools from MD Byline, Atania. If you are using a CMMS, which we pretty much all do, you might be using a product from Ames, from Four Rivers, from EQ2, from uh, St. Croix, which is now MindSpring. If you're using RFID, RLTS technology, there's probably 20 people that can sell you a software solution for that. If you're clocking in and clocking out and using the web, you might be using Kronos. If you're using any of the benchmarking tools that are out there, there's a tool from Amy, a tool from ECRI. There are parts people that have introduced web-based tooling to make it easier to get requests, to have requests fulfilled, to have parts shipped. 
uh, to track parts to get RMAs. Block imaging just introduced one. We at All Parts have one. Part Source was the pioneer introducing eParts Finder. Um, remote Diagnostics, our parent company does a great job there. Siemens is there. GE's there. Uh, ERP systems, your accounting systems, Loss and McKesson pretty much own the space, but SAP uh, exists there as well. Asset disposition, you might be using uh, Centurion's application. You might be using all parts for asset disposition. The point here is that there are multitudes of digital solutions, none of which or few of which speak to each other. So. Again, recalls. A lot of the CMMSs connect to recall softwares, ECRI, Rasmus. Uh, if you're losing, if you're under DNV or you're you have the joint commissions and regularity coming in to audit you, um, again, another application that sits out there as a silo. And if you look at the totality, the whole ecosystem, and I could have, I could have made this look even worse because I could have included testing softwares from Daytrend, from Fluke. I could have included softwares that our facilities brothers use, um, Catham Solutions, um, CMMSs for the plant side of the house. I didn't do any of that. I kept it contextualized to the tools that you as a HTM professional use and it still comes out as a pretty chaotic, desultory look. So what we do is we like to talk to customers because we, if we try to make decisions in our little corporate headquarters, we usually make bad ones. So talking to customers about this challenge, um, they see what we see. They see all these technologies that were supposed to make their lives easier, and when you, when you kind of like grab them all together and look at them as a whole, they really have not fulfilled that promise. Your life is not easier because you have 20 softwares. In fact, it may be a little bit more difficult. So asset lifecycle management, the ability to digitally manage an asset from the time you plan it to the time you inflate it to the time you outfleet it is a promise unfulfilled, in our humble opinions. So looking at specific um, verbatims from customers, systems designed to help streamline processes don't. They add steps, they don't reduce them. There's multiple logins, it's not single sign-on. There's a steep learning curve times how many softwares you have to know, and there's dirty data. Um, a lot of systems have been around a long time and the data is not pure and thus the you know decisions we make with that data and those reports can sometimes be suspect. We hear a lot of it's just easier to do it my way. I'd rather pick the phone up and call the people I know rather than using another app or another desktop solution. So habit is a mitigator to adoption and thus promise unfulfilled. Um, again, it's a hassle to have multiple screens involved, be navigating throughout. I can just have my CMMS open. I can diagnose the issue. I can call it for a part. Life is good. Not perfect, not optimized, but good. Um, and then all, we always hear, why can't these softwares talk to each other? We've made the investment. We're not realizing a great ROI because these things all remain out there independently. Many of you in this space have probably heard the buzzword interoperability. Actually, it's become more than a buzzword. Interoperability, I mean, HIMSS has an entire conference, and the whole theme of the conference is interoperability. How do we get people that um, market electronic medical record software to be somewhat manufacturer agnostic so that the doctor who's using these softwares can have a standard, can have a view, and all that digitization kind of gets harmonized and gets um, presented in a way that it's effective and one can act upon it. So interoperability gets all the attention, but the tools that you use, if you're an engine, if you're an imaging engineer, if you're um, a BMAT, those don't get any attention at all, which is kind of a familiar theme in many of the pain points that we realize every day. I'm going to just let this sit out there and you guys can kind of read what the definition of interoperability is, but I want to emphasize again, interoperability from a contextual perspective is all about electronic medical records. It is not about the tooling that sit in the cloud and that is supposed to help you in your everyday work life. So we're not in scope, us guys, our industry. Want to talk a little bit about some of the pioneers in the space? 
I'm going to give Renovo some props because they've done a good job integrating some of the procedures that joint commissions would require, FDA, FDA CMS would require. ECRIS was a, was a leader from a benchmarking perspective and has been a leader in many, many respects. Four Rivers, um, Henry Wild and his team have done a great job of creating a solution that's open so that if you want to vector into it as another software, you can. Um, and I think that's a really good starting point, but it's not nearly been um, it's not nearly been actualized. Phoenix Data Systems, Ames, another another great pioneer in the space. Very good company. Listens very well to its customer. Has has innovative has innovative ideas and, and has innovated quite significantly. PartSource, my former employer. Um, PartSource was the first one out with a parts um, procurement management solution, the parts finder, parts source has recently um, been talking about their newest application, which is the parts source marketplace. Very impressive as a um, enhancement tool. Amy, always always a leader. Um, very impressive what they've done. Lawson has a punch out functionality, so if you can connect your CMMS to your ERP, Lawson's one of the few that make that really easy. Not many of the people in their competitive set make that very easy. Um, our own parent company, Philips, has built some applications we'll show you in a minute um, that have, have, have really blazed trails. And there are many others. I, I, this is not meant to be an exhausted list, and this is not meant to insult anybody who didn't make the list. It's just to call out that everybody on this list has tried to attack the problem of how do we get this to become single sign-on? How do we get these systems to talk to each other? How do we minimize keystrokes and how do we maximize our our user base's productivity? But none of them has found the holy grail. They have all fallen short. Now, why have they fallen short? Um, I think what's happened is a lot of people have um, solved a piece of the puzzle, but it's a really, really complex puzzle with many, many pieces. So. You've got CMMSs that can connect to ECRI's recall recall tool. You've got CMMSs that can connect to a part solution. You've got some CMMSs that can connect to an ERP. But unless you can connect all those puzzle pieces that we that we showed on the first slide, where we've got you know multiple circles on that slide, it's almost like if you don't fix it all, you really haven't fixed any. Um, and again, a lot of that software ecosystem has remained untouched. Um, so really, the, the takeaway on this slide is it's great that you could solve three or four of the opportunistic interface situations, but if you can't solve them all, you really, you know, you haven't solved anything. So what are the hurdles? Well, why haven't we seen more progress in this respect? Why hasn't there been an interoperability push for our industry? Um, there's really not an off-the-shelf technology that can that can really um, commonize all of these disparate technologies. You could pull it off, but you'd need massive customization, which is extremely expensive and takes a long, long time. There are no languages that are universal. Again, back to standardization. Um, this is an important point three. Softwares don't necessarily match workflows. I remember being at PartSource and even at Four Rivers. And we'd be so frustrated because we built this interface between the part solution and the CMMS. And we couldn't understand why, when someone was in the CMMS, didn't they just click through to the part solution and send us voluminous amounts of parts requests. And the reason is, when a technician or, or an engineer is ordering the part, he or she's not in the CMMS. They're in the CMMS at the beginning when they get their work order and they have to go out and diagnose an issue or do a PM, they're in the CMMS at the end when they're closing out the work order, but they're not in the CMMS in the middle when they're ordering the part, at least not typically. And because of that, an integration between part and CMMS doesn't necessarily deliver on the promise. The other big issue is number four. Our demographic, if we look around a room where we're all together, our demographic is a little grayer than, than one might suspect. I'm 55 years old. I'm not necessarily the old guy in the room when we're getting together. And I mean our, our HTM professional base. Um, we have habits. We've been doing things the way we've been doing it for a long time. I don't want to learn another app. And a lot of you probably don't want to learn another app. 
So where we talked about earlier, it's easier to, easier to pick up the phone. That's a major, major um, stumbling block when you're trying to get new technology adopted. It is you who is part of the problem because you're not really embracing new technology. You, like me, are more of a laggard. You're not an early adopter or an innovator. And then there's no one in the industry driving this issue, and it's extremely expensive to solve this issue. Now, what have we done? Um, we market the All Parts Parts Wizard, which is a web-based tool that allows you to do all of your parts procurement management within that one portal. Philips Multivendor markets a CMMS called InfoView, very state-of-the-art, very robust from a reporting standpoint, very extensible. So it's an open architecture. You can vector out and you can build integrations fairly easily. We just launched the All Parts website. It's a new website. It allows you to look at parts availability in a matter of seconds. But we've not been a driving force in the industry. We've created really nice solutions that could be part of a completed puzzle, but in and of themselves don't solve the problem yet. So how do we get there? What do we do? Um, I think we need all of you to join us and push for a standard, a standard that's going to deliver on the promise, single sign-on, one-time data entry, um, a solution that's going to be a people strategy, not just promise productivity, but actually think about the user community and the tools that you not only would want to adopt, but could adopt, could use, and would actually effectuate the change that we're talking about here. Next bullet is really that this is a matter of survival. You know, we hear and we feel the pressure every day to become more lean, to become more Six Sigma, to take cost out, but to be able to do increasingly complex work and, and an increasing workload of work. Well, how the heck do we do that? if we don't get some tools to help us along the way. And along with that thought, can we get some tooling that allows us to leverage the already sunken costs we've made in all these other disparate softwares and systems? And thirdly, can we get a technology that actually matches our workflow so it's easy to adopt and we're happy to do so? The last thought on this, on this particular slide, and we're getting toward the end regardless, is this is a matter of succession. Again, as our workforce grays a bit and we t when we try to reseed our fields with younger um, people, because I'm going to retire in 10 years, so there should be someone in the succession plan to replace me right now at all parts, and that may be true of you as well, the next generation are not going to be Luddites like me. They're going to be innovators. They're going to be early adopters. They're going to expect a technology solution that's slicker, that's more consolidated, that's more powerful. So if we don't get a solution to this problem, we're going we're gonna to basically um, create our own impediment to recruiting and retaining the young, solid talent we're going to need to continue to be part of this noble profession and continue to deliver the way we deliver today and then some. So to me, it should be an industry frustration, but it should also be an industry opportunity. And I think if we get together, we can make it our solution and a solution that will work in a sustainable manner. So let's take a look at what the uh, future may look like. And what we've done here is put together a depiction of kind of our nirvana, our digital toolbox nirvana. In the middle at the hub is healthcare technology management congruence. I think if you have interoperability for EMR, we should brand our solution. And we came up with HTM congruence because congruity is fit. It's putting puzzle pieces together. And you can see all the different applications that remain out there in the ether and in the cloud today, not talking to each other and being very selfish and being very independent. We want to make them not selfish. We want to make them part of a cohesive community because if we can do that, we can take what is a chaotic situation today and create cohesion and by doing that, we can actually realize true asset lifecycle management in a digital continuum that will be extremely helpful to you, the user, to you, the director, to us, the industry. That is the pitch. Um, what I'd like to do now is open it up to Q&A. 
and then let you guys get back about the good work that you do today. Very good. Thank you, Kevin, for that presentation. We have had a couple of questions come in here, but we would like to remind the audience that there is still time to submit questions. Just use the chat feature uh, or the questions feature on your dashboard. Uh, as those come in, Kevin, a few that have uh, been submitted. The first one is, what is your experience with these different types of tools? Well, I spent a good deal of time in the enterprise software space, not in this industry. And when I came into this industry, it was with PartSource. And my job was really to take eParts Finder and build upon the integrations that we had. At that time, we had an integration with Four Rivers and also with Ames. I understand eParts Finder is integrated with many more CMMSs since. Um, and then to build upon that success to um, expand a solution set. Um, so I, I understand the space from a solutions delivery perspective. I did spend some time, again, at, at PartSource and then at Four Rivers and now at all parts. So I, I know the pain, I feel it, and I know how to leverage technology against it. Um, the other thing I did do that was interesting is um, at the time I joined PartSource, we had purchased Harvest Data Systems, and I ended up selling Harvest Data Systems to Henry Wild at Four Rivers. So um, that was kind of an interesting project. Um, but I can be a fairly good resource to the people on the call uh, if they're looking to do a CMMS assessment or they're looking to understand better how they can leverage what technology they do have. Okay, the next question we have here is, in your opinion, what are the best CMMS systems? Uh, tough question, and I wouldn't want to, you know, throw rocks or hug people, but um, if, if, again, I did this presentation in the context of the clinical engineering department or the HDM department or the biomedical department, however you want to phrase it, it really gets down to your requirements. I think you need to have a very good understanding of what are the problems you're trying to solve and then build a really exhaustive list of requirements. Once you have that and you bring in the major players, I mean, Four Rivers has a great product, as does Ames. Um, which is Phoenix Data Systems, as does EQ2, as does St. Croix, MindSpring, um, and there are many others with quality approaches. But let, just as an example, if you're only trying to solve um, your clinical engineering needs and you only need an interface to um, Lawson, your answer might be very different than if you're trying to solve a broader problem set. Let's say you're trying to not only automate and get you know, good, good, solid control over clinical engineering, but you also want a product for fleet, and you also want a product for plant, and you also want a product for, you know, for um, environmental services. That gives you a different answer. But I think it starts with requirements, and I think that the people um, that I mentioned earlier are all people that can give you a very solid uh, solution. Great. Uh, another question that just came in. How willing will all the stakeholders be in adopting this HTM solution? Well, I think that if you are a very savvy software marketer, anything you can do to make your software more valuable to the user community, you will jump at. And what this strategy does is it's not threatening to any of the individual siloed softwares. It's actually going to make them more valuable. So if you said to me, I'm an RLTS sub, uh, provider and you, the customer, want the RLTS application to talk to the CMMS, which will then talk to the ERP, you'd be foolish not to want to join that, join that parade. Um, so I see it more as a rising tide that lifts all software ships than a threat to any given software provider because no one's going to want to strip out that RLTS provider, they've already sunk money in there. So if they replace them, they've lost the money that they've invested. They want to get more out of the investment. So those who buy into this vision and those who want a plug and play option to their menu are going to be the victors. And those that are recalcitrant are going to be on the outside looking in. Okay. Uh, we have another question here. How can a CE partner with supply chain to help drive this type of change, both within the hospital and with service providers? 
I'm, I, let me read that again. How can CE partner with supply chain to help drive this type of change both within the hospital and with service providers? That's an awesome question, and actually, uh, it's already happening. I mean, I when I was toward my ending days at Four Rivers, you really weren't selling Four Rivers anymore to the clinical engineering team. You were selling uh, Four Rivers to a multidisciplinary team. So supply chain was there, clinical engineering was there, purchasing was there, finance was there, and they wanted an application that could deliver on all of those varied requirements. Um, so it's starting to happen, but I think as a as an industry, I think what we have to do is if you're the clinical engineering um, lead, let's say, and you're going to be either the, the, the power user of the software or the buyer of the software, you've got to pull these people into the to the canoe. You've got to have finance represented as you assess these solutions. You've got to have supply chain represented and you've got to show them that the reason you're doing that is that the ultimate decision is going to be best for supply chain, best for finance, best for clinical engineering. Again, and that gets back to that requirements document. If our requirements, um, for example, include we need to punch out to Lawson, that's going to be a pleaser to, to um, to finance, if the requirements are we need to punch out to Parts Wizard 3, we want an integration between the part solution and between the um, and between the CMMS, that's going to be pleasing to supply chain. So I mean, again, what is in it for them? Make something in it for them, and then you'll have collaboration with those other departments. Okay, great, Kevin. Thank you. Uh, looks like. We've wrapped up most of the questions. If we did not get to your question today, uh, rest assured that the folks at All Parts will get a copy of your questions and be able to follow up with those post-webinar uh, to answer them directly. I wanted to go ahead and move into our closing remarks. Uh, first of all, thank you, Kevin, for that uh, presentation, and also thank you to today's sponsor, All Parts Medical. Please visit their website, allpartsmedical.com, to learn more about their products and services. Attendees, remember to obtain your certificate of attendance. You must complete the post-webinar survey at the conclusion of today's presentation. It will appear in just a few moments on your computer screen. If you do not receive this survey, email us at webinar at mdpublishing.com. Also, please visit onetechnation.com forward slash webinars to register for our next webinar Wednesday. And thank you, and have a great rest of the afternoon.